Hello everyone and welcome to the sixth Coco programming tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can set different size attributes to your window and your UI elements. So basically this is the same application that we've been working with through all these tutorials so far. The only difference between this one is that I got rid of the awake from nib code that we worked on in the last tutorial just because it wasn't that necessary. I was just showing you in that tutorial how to do a wake from nib. So anyway, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at just the different size attributes of our window. So go ahead and just run your application that we've created already. And you'll notice that the application always starts in the same area every single time you launch it from uh, Xcode anyway. And um, you'll notice that if we go to resize this window, all the elements just stick in the top left. And they still work fine, but they're just staying in the top left, which can be obviously quite ugly. Uh, we can have full screen mode, and still they're all just sitting in the top left. We can also even just resize this all the way down to midget mode, and basically we don't see anything except for the stoplights. So that's really not uh, great application design. Um, I mean, obviously, when's the last time you used an application that seriously went like this. I mean, you probably have never used an application that did that. That's because most of the developers that make those applications are smart. So, without further ado, we're going to figure out how we can set the different size attributes to different items in our window. So, let's start with the window and just different things that we'd want to set with it. So, go on over to the right here. And in the utilities, you'll see under the size inspector right here, you'll see all these different options for setting the size of your window. So you can see the default size that it is when it starts. So this is just the normal size. Then you can also see constraints, which are basically settings for minimum size of the window and maximum size for the window. So let's say we don't want our window to be any smaller than it starts. We could hit just minimum size like that, and now our window will not uh, shrink any more than it starts, which is probably what we want because we don't want any of those elements to be any smaller than they start. So if you go ahead and build and run this, you'll see that when this finally builds, you'll see that we can still resize it out, but it doesn't go any more than what it starts. It just stops right there. So that's what we want. We don't want the window to go any smaller, so of course we like this minimum size checked on. We could also set a maximum size, but we'll just leave it for now since um, we don't exactly need it. You can also see that there's an option for initial position, and this is kind of nice. Uh, you can just rearrange this window by grabbing it in kind of this display mode, and you can change on where the window starts out. So if you wanted the window to start out at the top left, you could just set it like that. And now when our window or when our application starts, it'll start in the top left, which is right over here. So you can see that you can also edit the location of where the application begins. So we're just going to change that back to somewhere around the middle. And that's good. So we'll just leave that. And now we want to analyze uh, some of the different elements that we have in our window. So we're done with the actual window itself, but now let's look at the label and the button. So what do we want the label and the button to do? And we'll just start with the button uh, for the sake of this. And the button, what we want it to do is expand as we expand outwards with our window. And we also want the button to stay along the bottom, just for this tutorial anyway. So we want it to stay um, the same distance from the left side, we want it to stay the same distance from the bottom, also the same distance from the side, but we want it to expand the whole width. So how can we do that? Well, all we have to do is select the button, and like I said before, there's no code involved in this, which is really nice. So again, we go to the size inspector, and you'll see under the view settings, you'll see this auto resizing box, and along with this example of what will happen when we go to run this application. So you can see right now that our auto resizing box has these struts along the outside and springs along the or in the center. And that's just what they're called. They're just considered struts and springs. So you can call them whatever you want, doesn't really matter. But all you have to know is that the outside ones are for basically where the the um, 
frame of the button or whatever you have selected will stay. So in this case, it's set to be the same distance from the left side and the same distance from the top. So the outside or the struts are what will keep them in the same, uh, basically, same distance from either different ends. So if we, we can uh, basically change which sides we want this to stay on. So again, like we said before, we want the button to stay um, the same distance from the left, same distance from the bottom, and the same distance from the right. So in order to do that, we obviously don't want to stay the same distance from the top as we make this window larger. So we can just de deselect um, our strut right there, and we can select the different ones that we want. So as you can see, we've selected different struts, and this means it'll be the same distance from the left, same distance from the bottom, and the same distance from the right. And you can see in our example here, now uh, the little red thing basically represents your button. And as you can see, it's staying along the bottom as the window resizes. But you can see that the button doesn't stretch the full distance of the window as it stretches out. So how can we get it so that the button will expand as this window increases? And that's where the springs come in. So the center, or this in the middle here, is the expansion, basically, of different elements. So these are basically the locations. The struts are the locations of where the button will remain. But the springs are how it will expand and contract as the window expands and contracts. So here, if we select this spring right here, this is the spring that represents expansion in the x direction. So as you can see in our example, if our window is expanding now, our button should expand with the window because our spring expands left and right, which as the button will expand, it will go left and right. So that's exactly what we want. We have the setting for to stay the same distance from the left, same distance from the bottom, same distance from the right, and it will expand as the window gets smaller or larger. So now let's go ahead and build and run this. And once the window completes, as you can see here, let's just zoom in, you can see that when we expand this window, our button now stays the same distance from the left, same distance from the bottom, and the same distance from the right. And you can also see that it obviously expands as it goes along. And of course, it still works when we press the button. The, the label still changes, nothing needs to be readjusted. But as you can see, the button readjusts to its appropriate size that we want it to be adjusted to, which is great. So, uh, now that we've gotten that, of course, now we need to adjust what the label does. So the label is going to work similarly. It's essentially what we want it to do is stay the same distance from the top and same distance from the left and right, and of course it will expand as well because we don't want it to stay in that top left uh, position. So as you can see when we selected the label, again the default struts are on the left and the top, and what we want is we want it to stay um, the same distance from the top, same distance from the left, and the same distance from the right. So that will, uh, that's all the struts that we want enabled, and of course we want it to expand in the x direction as um, the box increases. So what we want to do is select the spring that will adjust it in the x direction, and now our label should be adjusting, as you can see in the example. So when our window gets larger, the, uh, the basically the frame of the window will stay in the same position or the same distance from the left, top, and right, but it will expand as the window gets larger and contracts. So let's go ahead and we're actually going to enable something else just to verify how this works. So if you go into your attributes inspector and in the label you'll see a few different options which uh, kind of are similar to what we did in the awake from nib. But you can select draws background and we're going to change the background color just to something else so we can see the background. And this will just help us to see how the label is getting larger and um, you know, smaller. So let's go ahead, build and run this now. And when we run, we'll see that we now start with this box. And as we expand this box, the label gets wider as the text box increases. And it also stays the same distance from the top, the left, and the right. So all the settings that we applied to the label and the button stay the same and they still work code-wise. 
So that's perfect. Um, we we just got what we wanted to work with our um, label and our button. And I'll just show you a few other things. Let's say we wanted um, the label to kind of go down as the window gets larger in the Y direction. So as our window kind of goes down like this, we want our label kind of to follow, not to stay at the top. And we can change this by simply not enabling the strut to stay along the top. So as you can see right now for our label, we have it so that it stays the same distance from the left, top, and right, but we also want it to move down a little bit as our window increases downwards or in the Y direction. So we can disable the top strut, and this will allow the label to basically flexibly move up and down as the box increases in the Y direction. So if we uh, lengthen the height of the box, then the label will also adjust its height to kind of go along with the box. So let's go ahead, build and run this, and now that we've disabled the top strut, you'll see that the label kind of goes with the box a bit. So it doesn't exactly, it doesn't stay along the top, it still listens to the struts on the left and the right, but it adjusts the top distance of the label. So it kind of adjusts where it's located as we change the box height. So that's pretty much all I wanted to show you for uh, the size attributes of the window and the different user interface elements. And you can see how this can be extremely useful uh, as you're creating new applications because, of course, your users sometimes will want to adjust the windows as you do all the time with Safari and tons of other applications. So anyway, that's um, all I want to show you in this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave your questions in the comments below. And please subscribe to the channel. I'm always trying to make more videos, and I uh, hope you're enjoying them. Also, if you want uh, updates as new videos are being uploaded, I always post to Twitter as well for any updates that come through. So if you want to know when new videos are up, um, you can subscribe to Twitter if you do that at all. Um, and also, I just wanted to point out that I uh, got accepted to a YouTube partnership, which I was pretty happy of. Um, so anyway, um, I got accepted into that, and I don't know, might be a few new changes to the channel and other things, but nothing too major, but I was just happy to announce that. So anyway, um, this was Lesson 6, and many more Coco tutorials are always in production. So I'll see you next tutorial.